Good evening all. I'm Aditi Lamba with the Tuesday night edition of South Asian News, Vision of Asia. We are coming to you from our studio in New York City. Welcome to the show. Let's begin the episode taking a look at the coronavirus pandemic and its impact. The world has surpassed 159 million cases of COVID-19 with now more than 3.3 million deaths. Experts, however, are predicting that the true global pandemic death toll could be as high as 6.9 million, more than double the official figures. India, home to many of our viewers, continues to see devastating impact of the coronavirus with nearly 23 million COVID-19 cases with at least 249,000 deaths. Again, many experts say this number is a huge undercount as many Indians are dying every day without being recorded as a COVID-19 death. Here in the United States, we are at nearly 33 million cases of COVID-19 with at least 582,000 deaths. Vaccination efforts are continuing with now nearly 35% of the country fully vaccinated. On vaccine, big news, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has expanded the emergency use authorization for Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine to include kids aged 12 to 15. Here's to hoping we reach herd community and get most Americans vaccinated. With that, let's now begin tonight's segment and take a look at the headlines. Democratic candidate for City Council District 23, political activist Harpreet Singh Thur, New York City. Hackensack Meridian Health sends critical supplies and oxygen to India, featuring Dr. Manisha Parulekar in New Jersey. Indo-American Arts Council launches acrobat poems by Navneeta Dev Sen, featuring Indian actress and writer Nandana Dev Sen. It's time for a short break on Vision of Asia, voice of the community. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. I am Aditi Lama and this is Vision of Asia Tuesday night episode of South Asian News. Let's begin by taking a look at coronavirus updates and measures. India has reached nearly 23 million cases and has registered more than 300,000 daily cases of the coronavirus and nearly 4,000 daily deaths. The total death toll is more than 249,000, which many experts say is a huge undercount. India is in dire need of oxygen, ventilators, critical PPE across the nation, with hospitals full and overwhelmed, running out of all the needed supplies. India is truly suffering right now, and many organizations and hospitals from the United States are now sending relief back to India. On that, recently the Hackensack Meridian Health in New Jersey brought together an Oxygen to India campaign to raise money to purchase oxygen concentrators and equipment for major cities across India. Currently, the campaign has sent its first shipment to hospitals in major Indian cities such as Mumbai and New Delhi and is now preparing for a second shipment of oxygen concentrators and other PPE. One of the doctors behind the Oxygen to India campaign is Dr. Manisha Parulekar, who is the chief of geriatrics at the Hackensack University Medical Center. Earlier today, we spoke with Dr. Parulekar. Here is the conversation. When you're looking at this much devastation in India and you're seeing such high number of cases and deaths, how do you observe these numbers and how bad it is for India right now? And how bad could it be for the world if it's not contained? Uh, these are all um, right questions. And I think that's what we all need to ask uh, ourselves. Uh, we know that situation in India is significant. Uh, we are losing a large number of people on a daily basis. Uh, we're also infecting a significant number of people on a daily basis. And we are seeing variant and other complications. Uh, so I, I don't think this is something that a particular state or a particular country, uh, uh, country's problem. It is the world's problem because the virus has definitely showed us that it spreads quite fast and it doesn't really discriminate. Um, so we, we all need to put our efforts to make sure that we contain it in, in any areas that it is uh, at, at its peak. And right now, unfortunately, it is at its peak in India. Mm -hmm. uh, so we all need to do everything we can to get it under control so it doesn't keep spreading to the different countries and different continents uh, and goes on uh, with having its presence. So I think this is... As much as it is in this problem, it, it equally is the worst problem as well. What's the worst case scenario, doctor, that could happen if it's not contained? I, I think we have already seen what is happening when we are not staying on top of it. We, we went through this here in the United States. We went through it in many other countries. 
and now they are looking at India uh, having this impact. It just keeps coming back with the full force, uh, more infectious, uh, rapidly spreading, causing more death. So if if we do not contain it in timely manner, um, we're not going to see a break in the cycle. So that's what that's the reason why. Um, we need to put all hands on deck and help each other and, and make sure that we stay ahead of the game for this particular virus. Now talk about Hackensack Marine Health. You do, you know, work there and you are the chief of geriatrics. Um, there is this campaign, Oxygen to India campaign, that has been started by you and a fellow doctor with you. I'd like to know what was the vision behind it and um, what sort of, you know, inspired you to start this right away? Uh, I think the... the the big inspiration was that we all have been through COVID and, and, and how rapid the response is needed uh, and how it quickly escalates. So we knew that there's not a lot of time to um, waste that, that whatever help is needed, it's it's right away and it needs to, be, it needs to happen real time. Um, we obviously wanted to support our colleagues and, and our healthcare professionals in India in any possible way that we can. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Shubha Verma, who's heading this initiative, uh, started talking to all of us, and um, so we all decided to help her uh, with her big vision and then providing with the actual equipment, um, not not just the monetary contribution, uh, so that the real help gets on the uh, on the grounds uh, as soon as possible. So our colleagues in uh, healthcare professional colleagues in India can provide. The support that our uh, people, uh, the people back home, we uh, that was the that was the urgency that we all understood the urgency very well. Uh, being have gone through this last year and understanding how devastating the effects are, um, I I think that that really motivated us and that made us understand the urgency quite well. Uh, and that's what got us all together. There are many uh, physicians who are involved in, in this initiative. And the community has uh, given generously as well. So we were very, uh, we're very thankful, uh, of course, Jack and Zach Meridian Health for a very generous uh, donation, as well as helping us with the actual supplies and actual processes um, to get this moving fast. Uh, and of course, to all the other providers and, and community to, to support us with monetary uh, donations as well. Right, and I, I read that there were about 200 oxygen concentrators and thousands of PPE supply, which has already been delivered. I'd like to know, how did you pick the cities where it's going to? So we wanted to pick the, the big metropolitan cities, which we knew are going to see a major influx just from the population pressure, um, and that the government systems there may not have the capacity um, and those are probably the, the hubs that are going to get converted into COVID hospitals. Um, and the people are going to walk there and want, want them to get the care that they need. Uh, so that's the reason why we picked the, the popular cities uh, which have been hit hard uh, with COVID. And that's how we decided that we're going to uh, we'll start there and we'll see how, uh, how much can we extend to other cities. But at least we'll start with the big metropolitans getting out there soon. Uh, because they know that the population will practice Right. Doctor, you know, there's been such a huge uh, effort on these oxygen concentrators, these oxygen tanks. Just just uh, according to you, I'd like to know, how much oxygen do you think India needs right now? Okay. It's a, it's a complex uh, question. Um, and it's complex because of the number, uh, the number of people um, just... First of all, we will need the numbers of how many people are actually hospitalized. And we know that's a massive number. Um, we also need to understand what was the, on the ground there in, in the beginning. But just looking at how things are and what you're seeing on social media, um, I think India is going to need hundreds of thousands of uh, oxygen concentrators and, and oxygen related supplies. And, um, I'm sure with all of all of us are looking at the news. I think that's the much more urgent need, uh, in addition to the vaccination and other efforts, uh, because that's that's where that is where things are very critical. If a patient is needing very high flow oxygen and if they don't get it in timely manner, um, it is detrimental. It is um, um, it can lead to significantly negative outcomes, including death. 
So we know that it's urgent. It's not something that we can wait around. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what is making it so critical that it, the, the number that's needed um, and the urgency at which it is needed. Let's now take a look at the Indo-American Arts Council and its dedication towards thought-provoking and inspiring Indian authors and writers. Recently, the Council launched a new book titled Acrobat, a book comprising of collection of poems by legendary Bengali writer Nabanita Dev Sen. It has been translated from Bangla to English by Indian actor, writer and child rights activist Nandana Dev Sen, the daughter of the legendary writer. At the virtual launch, Nobel laureate Abhijit Banerjee had an exclusive conversation with actress Nandana Dev Sen discussing the importance and essence of the book. They share their personal memories and moments with Nabanita. Acrobat explores the themes of womanhood, body politic, and intimacy. Here's a part of the virtual conversation presented by the Indo-American Arts Council. <laughs> Growing up lesson. Boy, are you scared of bloodshed? Are you terrified of plucking virginity? If the taste of blood goes to your head, you fear it will be a total calamity? The truth is, whether wrong or right, your blood calls out to you each night. <coughs> Listen, boy, it's time for you to grow. Words can be as fierce, don't you know? The treachery that lingers on tongue tips beyond the world that all your dreams show know that blood can be easily shed by lips. Mm. Since I have this in my hand, I want to take just a minute to read a couple of lines from the preface because uh, for a number of reasons. One, because I feel uh, it's a way of invoking her. I feel uh, that it's it's lovely to have an opportunity to read a few lines written by you from a book that she held in her hands and a preface that she had read. Uh, but also because I think these lines kind of remind me of Acrobat, although this is a book of economics, as we know, and Acrobat is very much a book of poetry. But um, like you, Ma wrote her poetry to hold on to hope to tell ourselves a story of what went wrong and why, but also as a reminder of all that has gone right. A book as much about the problems as about how our world can be put back together as long as we are honest with the diagnosis. And I think my, poet, my mother's poetry was uh, with every word searching for an honest oh, yeah. diagnosis. This poem is called um, in poetry. I'll read it in Bangla now uh, as the, it's the first poem just for all of you to get a get a sense of the music of the language. Jotokal Kubitai. Beche thako, kute thako. Omok passport chobi hoye, prottik line tumi jege thako. Akhonto teshtar moton. Chati Pata Jontrona Amar Kute Thako Kuti Ethekona Dratokal Kubitai Maji In Poetry Stay alive Show yourself clearly Like an unfailing passport photo Stay awake in every line You Like an unquenchable thirst Yes, you the pain that tears my heart apart, show yourself clearly like a flower in full bloom. Don't hide from me as long as I live in poetry. The next one, um, 
I'm going to read another one that uh, Chimada selected, which is the title poem is Acrobat. So again, um, Acrobat. She thought she knew acrobatics rather well, that she could juggle time with both hands, play with the now right next to the then. She would make both dance, she thought, fist to fist. And she would glide so smooth along the tightrope. She thought she could do absolutely anything at all. Only once in your life will the rope shiver. I love the fist to fist there. I just. It's such an unlikely way to describe, and yet it's exactly right. Yeah, you know, uh, she had Lopalupi in Bangla, actually, Yeah, which is slightly different, but I'm so glad that you like that, like that, yeah. Um, because there is a sense of a confrontation in that, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes love. It comes when called, like a pet cockatoo. It sits on my finger, fluttering. It sways its neck, fluffs its feathers, swings its crest, and recites its practiced lines, uttering every pleasing word. My lily white bird repeats to me all that it has been taught and sings best, saying just what I want to hear. It pours honey into my ear. But behind my back, soon after, Alone, perched on its base, my lily white bird flatters its shiny shackles as it cackles with laughter, shedding feathers in empty space. In marriage, Pani Grohan, Banglainam. Stay close, I'm scared. It feels as if this moment is not true. Touch me, like the closest ones touch the body before cremation. This hand, take it, my hand. Hold this hand, as long as you're near me, don't leave it untouched, I'm scared. It feels as if this moment is not true, as untrue as our long yesterday as untrue as our infinite tomorrow. It's time for another short break on Vision of Asia, Voice of the Community. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Aditi Lama and this is Vision of Asia, South Asian news segment. Sikh American community leader and political activist Harpreet Singh Thur has announced his candidacy for New York City Council District 23 in Eastern Queens. The Democratic primary election for this district is on June 22nd and early voting begins June 12th. The district comprises of multiple minorities and communities of color and includes neighborhoods such as Fresh Meadows, Flora Park, New Hyde Park, Glen Oaks and others and many South Asian Americans reside in these neighborhoods. If elected, Mr. Thur would become the first Indian American on the New York City Council with his belief in fair share for everyone and a focus on pandemic relief. Here's a segment of a conversation we recently had with Harpreet Singh Thu, Democratic candidate for New York City Council, District 23. Okay, what's going to be on your agenda for your first 100 days if you were elected? Uh, my first 100 days on my agenda, like I mentioned before, having the meetings with the PBA, uh, having the meetings with the school chancellor and the teachers uh, in my district so that I can assess their requirements. Uh, meeting the, uh, you know, civic associations, trying to communicate with the elderly people what they are missing. It is, even though it is a transportation needs, but how we can fix it and what kind of solutions we can have. Those should be immediate issues to be looked at. And from there, once you build up the ground, then you can move on. Right. I have two more questions that are left for you. And I have to ask you because you're a community leader and you're also Indian American. There's a lot that's happening in India right now, this devastating news that keeps on coming every single day. Thousands are dying. Um, who do you think is responsible for all of this? Should India have opened up so fast? 
Well, for me, yes, we can always go into making the people responsible, this and that. The first thing should be how to save the lives. Okay, we are in the middle of this uh, crisis right now. And if we go on doing the blame game, nothing will get achieved right now. Right now, we need to save the lives. And for that, we have, you know, uh, been sending the funding uh, to the people who are working on the ground, like, you know, some of the nonprofit organizations or NGOs in India. And uh, there was some uh, oxygen uh, issue also. There are people who are sending out the machines. We are coordinating with them. The, the, already the first shipment, I think it is already gone. It was supposed to go yesterday or today. And so for me, first is contain the situation. Right. We can always look back later on and see, okay, who was that fault? And whosoever did anything intentionally, that person, person should be penalized, whether it's a politician or a bureaucrat. But right now, let us save the lives and then we can talk about uh, blaming somebody. Do you think India should go in a national lockdown again? Last lockdown was a horrible experience for the people where they walked uh, thousands and thousands of kilometers, hundreds of kilometers, some of them even close to a thousand kilometers to reach to their houses. The government, what they should do, like over here, you know, they set up a date, okay, we are going to go down into lockdown in two weeks time. Hmm. Let the families get together. After that, you implement the lockdown. You just cannot uh, get up in the middle of the night and say that, okay, uh, at 12 p uh, a.m. in the morning, or 12.01 a.m. in the morning, or whatever it is, army time 0001 a.m., we are going to lockdown. No, you should not be doing that. Hmm, for sure. Well, it was really nice having you here with us on ITV Gold. I just have one last question for you. What do you have sure. to say to the South Asian community that's residing in your district? I'm sure they'll be very important when it comes to voting. Oh, yeah. What I'm going to say to them is they need to look at the list of candidates who are going to represent them. They should look at my achievements. They can Google my name and find out. They can go to tourforcityconsult.com and look at what I'm planning to do. They can walk into my office uh, on Hillside Avenue and 251 Street and talk to me. I'm going to be there every Thursday from 5 to 7 just to listen to and talk to the people who live in the neighborhood. They can come to my office. And also, uh, look at the results which I got so far, even without being elected. So just imagine if I get elected, uh, what I can achieve. And like I said before, Let's be at the table and start up being on the menu. And this is the time. And our community, our people, they can do it. And uh, I'm not only, uh, you know, some people, they say, I'm, um, oh, I'm ready to lead. No, no, no. I'm ready to serve. I have been serving the community, and I will serve even better once I get elected. Well, this wraps up our show for the night. Please send us your suggestions to get your voices and organizations on our show. Email us on events at itvgold.com or follow us on Facebook at itvgold. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel for free access to many of our popular shows. Thank you for joining us tonight from Queens, New York. This is Vision of Asia, and I am Diti Lama. Take care and be well. Thank you.